deriving the rate equation, and we will give an introduction to inhibition as examples, and to get a closer look what this kind of approach means in terms of deriving your personal rate equation. Um, let's have a go. Okay, inhibition, what does that mean? Generally, we have something where we say we have the common setup of a substrate. We will put this to the product. And in the context we're talking about, this of course is done by an enzyme. Also, there is an inhibitor. And this is typically the bad guy preventing the actual catalytic action. And, and what we will typically see is that with increasing uh, amount of concentration of the inhibitor, there will be a decrease in catalytic activity. This can be translated to um, uh, multiple different mechanisms and we will take the symbols approach first where we say, okay, we have the substrate and let's put up a mechanism for that um, saying we have the substrate and we already established that there is a scenario where we can say we have an enzyme here and actually then this is then converted to some sort of interactive complex here, which is then further on converted to the product. Apply the principles saying, okay, what do we need? We need one limiting step. Yeah. Which will be great limiting step. And I will choose this one. Yeah. We will see in further examples that the choice of course makes a difference in what you get as a rate equation, but they're all valid. So there's no real guideline other than experience which actually which uh, step to choose as the actual rate limiting step. And for that we will then get rate, uh, rate constant for that. And that's the, and the other choice we have to make is say okay everything else is in equilibrium. We depict this by putting it full equilibrium here and I will denote this to be K as the equilibrium constant which in this case then means that K here translates to that the ratio of in this case the species AE Yeah. And the species of A and free enzyme shown to be this ratio, and this ratio is constant over time and at all times, yeah, which makes our derivation much easier. Right. And then we have. Um, the second thing, and then there's now what is what is now the inhibition, and we are talking about so-called reversible inhibition only. So this is a you know, crucial thing that we say, okay, we talk about inhibition, and this is of course reversible. And the easiest way to probably depict that or could have a model for that is that we say, okay, there is a the enzyme again. And it interacts or binds to the inhibitor 
also fully reversible. In a way, that this gives us an in vitro enzyme complex, which does not give rise to any product image, and thereby binding a proportion of the enzyme, which is then not available for direction. And that is the easiest way of depicting something like that. Don't ask me whether this is competitive or non-competitive. I think it is labeling, yeah. And probably this is probably um, competitive. Yeah? Thinking of that this is maybe competing for the same active site. Here, yeah? So there's there's one active site which can either be occupied by the substrate or by the inhibitor. Right. So, and we have the second equilibrium here, and also for that we can write down that yeah, we have the complex here. And we can shortcut this a bit. So here we have E, we have E, we have this one. And it's easy to confuse this, but you have to be careful to get the notation right because, of course, yeah, we don't want at the end of the day, to confuse this complex with the concentration here. Yeah, so this is a bit. Okay. And we will use the rearranged ones later. Yeah, so they will multiply this out. But we have these two constants. Uh, I will also denote this with an extra i, yeah, just to avoid any confusion. And probably it is wise to note this to be k a just to make sure. But the choice, whether this is K or Epsilon or whatever, it's fully up to you and I don't object. Yeah, so this is typically, these are the things you would find, yeah, but there's no real convention or anything like that, giving these parameters any symbols here. Right, so what do we need for a rate equation then? So our rate And typically, you will look at the way the substrate is consumed, which is, of course, then negative here. Yeah, and that's the rate we're looking for. As we typically look looking at uh, closed mass balances, and this will be the same as product formation, uh, but of course with a positive sign. What will the rate look like? Um, more generally, we have seen that there is a, um, a driving uh, numerator, so we have the driving one, and we have the absorption one. Yeah, so these two ingredients will need the likelihood of direction to take place is proportional to the concentration of AE. So this is our driving driving concentration. I think this is uh, the likelihood with, for that to react is given by K. And the overall likelihood of this happening is governed by the absolute amount of enzyme in the system, which is the so-called E0, which is either the total or the initial enzyme amount, uh, concentration, sorry, yeah, uh, so something we probably weigh in appropriately. So this is, of course, also a driving that means this is proportional to that. And the other thing we have to look at is that we are looking at the likelihood of this to happen is the proportion of the ratio of this concentration here compared to all the concentrations in which all the states in which the enzyme can be yeah, productive or non-productive. So this is the likelihood of that. We have to see that there is the enzyme. We have to see, of course, that there is an AE. Uh, 
And as an addition, now we have this complex here, which is, of course, not a bad guy, or whatever. Yeah? You think of this, yeah, which is actually preventing the actual catalysis to happen, which is not, not necessarily a bad thing, but for something, if you want to, something to be productive, then typically this is the scenario we're looking at. Looking at that, and to cut things short, the overall outcome of this is very straightforward. Now we will put all these back by constants. Yeah, so we use these two equations to substitute this one and this one. You will find, unsurprisingly, or surprisingly, whatever, you, whatever state you are in, is that there is an enzyme concentration in all of these terms left, which we then can multiply out and then cancel out because it's a nuisance anyway. We don't need that, and it's preventing us from having a rate equation. And the end, the end result will look something like that. So it's easy now. It's K, and it's the concentration of A in the driver. Yeah, so that is something which is happening on this side. And down here, we will get a 1 plus the concentrations again. 1 is the concentration of A multiplied by Ka. And the second term here gives rise to the concentration of E for the inhibitor, sorry, it's I. And E complex. And there we are. And that's inhibition. Yeah, to us. What does that look like actually? Now you can do things, you can depict that. Yeah. Two ways of doing this. What you will get is the following curves is that you will have some sort of activity or rate as a function of inhibition concentration. And this will look like so it has something like we have zero, so then this gets zero. There's some activity. And the higher you go with the initial concentration, the lower you will get. And you will get some sort of this behavior here. Yeah? This is one way of depicting that. The other way is that if you look at rate as a function of substrate concentration, which is the usual way of looking at these things, is that you will get something here, like that, probably, and this belongs to the concentration zero, and then you get to more and more inclined version of that, yeah, so this is going down with E going up. And that's the behavior in proof we also will find experimentally, yeah. These two terms, and then you can fit the constant to that accordingly to your experimental results. So that is all about reversible inhibition in its simplest form. Right. Okay. That's the, the first example. You can do another one. Um, and I will end. Let's now look at another. Uh, which is called non-competitive, I guess, inhibition, which looks a little bit different. Uh, so we look at another mechanism. And the idea is that actually there is um, non-competitive inhibition, and that is that you say, okay, there is another mechanism behind that. Actually, the mechanism is, and that makes me use three colors, is that you will see that there is an interaction not with the free enzyme, but the enzyme 
here bound active center. So it's bound to the active center here. So what we have here is A, E, and this interacts, uh, and only this interacts, with your inhibitor. Again, reversible, fully reversible, and gives rise to an A, E, I complex. Again, with the inhibition constant. The inhibition constant translates again to something like that, where you have the A and I. And we say by this rapid equilibrium assumption, say okay, the ratio of these are given by this constant at all times. We will need one thing more because if we now substitute this back, yeah, we will need to substitute this again, and this is of course given here by the Ka. And what we ultimately need is an expression for the AEI. And I'll do this down here. Yeah, so what we get is then we want to substitute all our non-observables. So it's A E I concentration. And this is KI times A times E. Times the addition. So far so good. And this is not observable as well. Yeah, this is something we, we can substitute this back with this second equation. And what we get is a bit more messy, if you will. It's Ki. And now we substitute this in. Ki, Ka, then we, we get A, we get E, and we get I, and all of these are concentrations. So far, so good. So, this is what we need later on to substitute this species back. And so, we have two equilibria in a row. First, this one, starting from a non-observable, we will relate this back to our measurable or observable species here. And then, rate, again, will be two things. Again, small k, there will be the initial or absolute amount of enzyme driving the whole thing, and this is still the same thing here, where we have A, E, and down below we get all the species, which are E, which are again A, E, and last but not least, it's our A, E, I. And these are all concentrations. And here is the sum of all these concentrations. We substitute this back. We get something which is very similar to the other one. Yeah? Don't forget this plus sign here. And then, yeah, and again, I will do this for the experience, so we want to do this a little bit more in detail. Yeah, this will give rise to A concentration. 
We have E, which ultimately will be, will be cancelled out. Yeah, E will be in all these. Yeah, we will find E in all these. If E is here. For AE, we will substitute essentially this equation. There's A times E for this species here. We will substitute this conclusion. There's also an E here, so we can multiply this out and cancel it out. This will give uh, rise to KA. A concentration, yeah, and the other one will give rise to this a bit more ugly term, maybe. So this will give rise to Ki, Ka concentration of A. And concentration multiplied by concentration of the inhibitor. And you may want, but that's only for cosmetic reasons, you may want to have a new inhibition constant, Ke prime, yeah, which is the multiple of Ki and Ka. Yeah, in order to have only one constant here, but this is not really necessary. Yeah? So that is something you can do, you don't have to do. Uh, um, yeah, as Ki is not alone in this equation, there is no way of separating them anyway, so there is no need to have two different values here. But that's up to you, I would do that for a simple kinetic reason. Yeah. You see the difference in equations with this subtle, yeah, because the only difference is that we, in this kind of inhibition term here, there's also an A present. Yeah, that means that the inhibition is more pronounced, actually, the higher the subset concentration is. So it's even worse yeah, than we had before. So okay, we, we can keep inhibitor off. Yeah, in, yeah, this may enhance or increase actually the amount of inhibition depending on the amount of A, or the amount of substrate A in there. Um, yeah, this may, may make a difference. Uh, it is not very often observed. And to be honest, if you look at the experimental data later on, this is very, very hard to distinguish these two mechanisms. Yeah. So you would have to do very thorough investigation, very thorough experimentation actually to, to distinguish these two, um, which typically is not done. And you stick with the simpler one, which is the model for the competitive inhibition, which is also more likely, uh, because there's no true binding sites on one enzyme, for industrial enzymes at least. Yeah. For biochemistry, this may be another story, but that's not what we're looking at in this course. Thank you for your attention.